we got chased with seven attackers. We all had balaclavas on and we're holding long weapons, knives in their hands. They surrounded me. One of them took off their balaclava and never recognised me. He even said, I don't recognise this um, civilian. I tried to explain to them, whatever this is, I, I, I'm not involved, but they all rushed me and started stabbing me all over my arms, my legs, and my chest a little bit too. Rico Finlayson was stabbed 10 times and left bleeding in the street. As he was rushed to hospital in London, his father, Justin, a bus driver, had just finished work in Bristol. Tyron. The last call I got before I jumped in the car was from Rico's mum and I could just hear her screaming, phone just hung up, so I just thought, wow, you know what? I actually don't want to hear my phone ring again because obviously it's going to be the kind of news that no parent wants. So I was just so relieved when I got to the hospital. You know, there was tears, but it was more tears of relief that I were there and it wasn't the tears that, you know, Rico's passed. The irony of the attack on Rico is that his father's charity, United Borders, works with young people caught up in violence. He bought and kitted out this bus to bring rival gangs together to produce music. While Justin believes music can be a powerful force for good, the role of so-called drill music has been blamed by many for helping to escalate violence. The Metropolitan Police have begun a clampdown on artists producing drill. Justin has brought Rico to one of the music workshops his charity is running. Since being attacked, Rico wants to help. He's keen to understand what might be fueling the violence. So do you think that drill has to play a part in the youth knife arm crime? Um, there's different types of genres of music and they all express different types of emotions, yeah, different yeah, feelings. Yeah. Even down to opera, there's murder in opera. Mm. We didn't go opera's the reason for all of this. We didn't yeah. say rap was the reason for all of this. Yeah. People was expressing themselves. Now you can't persecute somebody for speaking how they feel or what they're going through. Some of them are actually going through this, isn't it? Like, yeah. We know for facts, like we've got little 14 year olds come in, they're, they're talking about stuff that you can't even fathom. You don't expect the 14 year old, you, uh, your kid to be going through that, but they're going through these stuff, isn't it? So when they say to them, all right, cool, we don't know how to deal with them, they're going through these things, but we're going to shut down the music. You're shutting out their, their outlet now. So once you shut out their outlet, where are they going to go? If they shut them out, they're still going to do it. They're going to find another outlet. They're going to, do you know what I'm saying? It's one of them ongoing things. Mm. Because like I said, it was here before drill. Certainly this last year where the numbers have been going up and they've been dreadful, society seems at a loss as to know what to do. The whole thing is based on fear. They're scared of the, the opposition, so they carry a knife. And that's when they start building up these, these ideals that me and you are different, <laughs> we're all the same. And that's the problem. We, all, we are the same, come on. We have to get our young people to actually look at ever young people, not as a threat, but as a partner. When I was growing up and there was funding, and our boroughs used to take all these kids that didn't know each other to take us away for two weeks on a team bonding exercise thing and return us back to our own catchment areas. We had friendships all over the, the borough. So we try to mirror that in our own way through music. Sixteen-year-old Ray has crossed postcodes to be here, drawn in part by the chance to make music. We asked him if it was hard to turn his back on what he calls the madness around him in his area. I've been drawn, but I've been able to pull myself back, if you get what I'm saying. But a couple, there's some young children that can't do that. Oh, the hype is big right now, you feel me? Like, if you're not a gangbanger, then what are you? You're irrelevant. And what's that pressure like? It's quite hard, let me not lie to you, it's quite hard. Cause everyone wants to be accepted. Like, no one wants to be alone, no one wants to feel like their, um, like their area is isolated, you feel me? You want to have people around you, you want to be doing things. Are you more at risk by almost turning your back on it? Yes, you are more at risk, but... As I said, it is what it is. Like, you can't still, you can't change anything from happening right now, you feel me? Apart from that, what I'm trying to do, put a good word out there. And that's a big part of what they're doing here, putting a good word out, literally trying to change the soundtrack to young people's lives. 
the message will change if you allow the message to change and teach them how to change the message. You can still put a positive message on a tune and still keep the hype of what people are listening to. You can still put that energy through, but without all the, the violent talk. Self-discipline, listening will keep all the young ones real. Save life still. When we're having these debates and it's around gang culture, I think we're actually discussing the wrong thing. This is neglect. And I've said before, and I stress, this wouldn't be allowed to happen in Cambridge, Eton, Oxford. It just wouldn't be allowed to happen the way this has been allowed to happen to certain, you know, people within our society. We're allowed, we're perfectly fine with certain young people killing themselves. When you start to talk about making cuts, which I call cuts crime, this is where we are. If you've had over a decade of penetrative cuts, for, so for me, for someone that's delivering a service, I can only deliver a service for a week, maybe two weeks at, at best because the funding is not there. So you, what kind of relationship can you foster with a young per person who's in an unhealthy home, you know, or who's facing violence or whatever the, the, the fulcrum may be? How, how, how much attention can I give that young person? I'm only there for a week or two weeks. And then I'm gone like all the other, pers all the other people in that person's life. They'll phone you after 12 o'clock at night. Do you understand? And you got to want to. If you're not on it, don't do it. Emo works shifts as a Tesco delivery driver, but the work he does here for free, he says, is round the clock, producing music, but more importantly, acting as a constant figure in young people's lives. And what it is, I'm training them. Right now, I'm training them to see what the, the qualities, where I can take them and how far we can go. And what did make you jump on the train to come down? The way Emo approached me. Literally that, and the opportunities he gave, he gave me a lot of time in the studio for me. Me and them all built a friendship, built a bond, and now I'm here. If you could help the people within those communities, like Emos, you know what I mean, and build them up to help others, and then he can help us build ourselves up to help the others again. Watch how quick things will change. Kids who are at high risk need extra support. So I understand people that just want to naysay from the sidelines, but I will say, get involved in your community, actually get on the ground, get off your, your, your leafy tower, get involved, and you will see. I'm not, it's not something I'm making up. In April, Justin's bus was destroyed in a fire, an incident he believes was unrelated to the work of his charity. Are these windows letting in water as well? He's raised enough money to buy a new bus. Several bus companies have refused his request for a safe place to park it in one of their depots. Unless someone steps in, he says, he won't be able to get the project back on the road. But both father and son are still determined something positive will come out of the attack on Rico, which nearly cost him his life. The reality is I work in an arena where I have to be that kind of person that brings hope to young people who make these kind of decisions and get people to change their mindset about things like this. So how better, than, how better to do that than actually show the example? It's not always, you know, get revenge. It's not always get revenge because at the end of the day, revenge is not gonna, ain't gonna take you anywhere, ain't gonna make you feel any better or anything like that. If anything, it'll make you probably feel worse. Are you proud of him? Extremely, extremely. Um, I can't tell him enough, to be honest with you. Um, to see that he's still smiling, still very positive, you know? It just gives me the, the will to continue the work that I do. So yeah, of course, very proud.